Hey everybody, welcome to this painting session. Uh, I've had a lot of requests to do an oil painting, so I thought I would try one, a quick one, today. Now, I haven't painted in a long, long time. Um, many, 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 many months. Uh, this is the style of Bob Ross. Everyone knows who Bob Ross of PBS is. I'm no Bob Ross. I'm just an amateur who likes to paint. Been painting since I was a kid. Started in like the 1980s painting. Um, I don't have a lot of time to paint, but I love to do it. It's very relaxing. It's like meditative to me just to create something on a canvas. Now today I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to paint, but I'm in the mood for something fairly dark because it's storming outside right now. It's raining and thundering and I don't want something too bright like you can see the painting in the background there. That's quite bright, but this one's going to be dark, um, fairly monotone. Other than that, I have no idea what we're going to do. We have a vertical canvas today. I think it's 18 by 24. Of course, you can paint any size that you wish. This particular canvas has been primed with a, uh, a liquid white, which helps the paint move more. This is a style of painting that's quite unique. Um, it's used with large brushes. It's not fine art by any means. It's very subjective. Uh, some people love it. Some people hate it. Purist artists despise it because they think it's not art. However, what I love about Bob Ross and his teacher William Alexander is they inspired many people like myself who are novices to pick up a brush and paint. And because of that, I believe the world is a better place. So in the inspiration of that style, let's begin. Um, I want to start with some black because I want this again quite a dark sky so I'm going to make it quite gray. Now because there's already white on here this should really start to blend in. So this is the center here. We have a sky. We're going to have something down here. Again I want this to be quite stormy so let's start in this area here and I'm just going to add some darkness. Just going to add a touch of midnight blue to that. I want to just a bit more steel blue kind of dark here. I really want this blending in. We're just adding color in right now. I'm going to make this much darker up here. Again you'll see where I'm going with this in a few minutes. really want this to blend in. Usually around the edges you want it darker than the, than the center. So from here, working in the edges, I'm just putting some darkness in. And you can see by leaving white, it'll create the illusion of clouds. So a lot of this painting style has to do with what you leave out rather than what you put in. But from here, I'm just going to add in a very, very quick type of sky. Now I'm going to use another brush just to start to blend this out because the sky should be quite far away and soft. So I'm just making these crisscross strokes which will fill in the white spaces. And the more that you blend, the more that this will go away. So I don't want to blend too heavily. But at the same time, you don't want the sky to be too detailed because I want the illusion of rain and storm. So you can even pull down as if it's rain, raining outside. Blending this in a little bit. So just by making these long strokes here, I can even it out. Leaving just a little bit of detail there course toward the horizon it usually gets lighter. So you want it dark at the top, lighter toward the bottom. I like this rain effect here just by pulling, can you, I don't know if you can see that, by pulling the brush down you can make the effect that it looks like it's raining in the distance. And then you just go across to get rid of the strokes against the light. Now that quickly, look how fast that was, five minutes and we already have kind of an ominous fairly dramatic sky. Now if you wanted to go in you could add bunches of clouds. In this case I'm going to keep it simple. I don't have to add any white in 
because I left the white in, but you could go over this and add. The beauty of this style, unlike acrylic paint, which dries extremely fast within minutes, oil paint is, it can move, it's malleable, so you, this painting will probably take a week to dry. So I could go back many, many times and change it and move stuff around. You literally are a creator in this painting and you can create whatever you wish. Now I want to create a really dark mountain pass, so what I'm going to do is start with a farther away mountain and probably move forward. So for far away mountains we can almost use this as a judge of space here. I want these mountains to come in here. So in order to make far away mountains we're going to use another type of brush. Let's see. Mm. I want these mountains to be really dark. So I'm going to mix together some blue and some black paint here. Maybe a little bit of the Linzet Lizard and Crimson. I want it really dark. Steel blue with some blackness to it. Now by adding just a touch of white on the paint here, it's going to make it a lot brighter. So the farther away the mountains are, the more light they become. So we're going to start with a lighter hue here. This should be enough paint and we'll work our way forward. Let's see, uh, I think I'll use a filbert brush. I have bunches of brushes going on here. Painting is not a cheap, a cheap hobby. Um, you can spend a lot of money on the equipment. The oil paint itself is uh, can be anywhere from $10 to $15 a tube. And then you need several brushes unless you want to clean your brushes all the time. Uh, so it's not a cheap hobby. That's why they call them starving artists. So I'm just going to load up this brush here with this kind of this dark purplish color and we'll just start to add the illusion of faraway mountains. I'm not sure if this is dark enough so if I'm here I like that cloud I don't want to ruin it too much so if I just move in here and start to create just the illusion of mountains bring these down and up. In order for the light to show you have to have darkness. In order for the darkness to show you have to have light. So if I bring these up here, again I'm just creating this illusion far away mountains. Maybe something out of the Lord of the Rings or something quite, quite far away. Now I'm only concerned about the very top line because I'll show you what I'm going to do in a minute. I just want this top line really soft, almost imperceivable against the clouds. I don't want this to be too straight. I'm going to go a little higher on this one. It's the beauty of this is you can literally build mountains with one stroke going up Here, keeping the center a touch more detailed. Yeah, I like that. So we're just having a couple of mountains here. Again, I'm, I'm only concerned with the very top line. So this white against this dark is really a nice line here. Now if I just take a soft brush here and pull this. I instantly dull these out, push them farther back in the painting, creating this mist in the front because it's mixing with the white on the canvas so you can see quite quite far away barely imperceivable very gray it's a dark stormy day now I'll go in and create a darker mountain because I want to push that back so I can use let's use a palette knife because I really want I'm only going to make two 
I'm going to make two layers of mountains. I'm not going to make three. So I'm just going to use a palette knife to make sure that it really sticks out. So I'm going to load this up with super dark paint, black, blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson. I really want this to be super dark. Now I have to decide where we're going to put our mountain. Um, I think I'm going to put it right in the center or right off to the right here. Kind of this direction, maybe one over here or mm, it's so subjective. You can put it wherever you want. You have to be brave in this style. You have to dig right in. So let's put it. I like that there. I'm going to leave that. Let's put a mountain. Let's put a mountain right here. Again, I'm only concerned about the very top, very top layer here. Instantly that pushes, pushes these back, digging right into the canvas here. Dark mountain. Another one coming up here, perhaps mimicking that one over there. Squinting my eyes because I can see the tip better. I really want to pronounce that there. There's a big mountain peak here, moving up. Coming down. Let's put a big one here, cover this, bring them right in. These are kind of steep here. bit more gradual on this end. Again, you're only concerned with the very top. No one cares what happens with the rest. Isn't that cool? You can build mountains so quickly in this style. Now I'm pulling the excess paint off. Make sure you have plenty of paper towel. I don't want too much paint on there. Again, I'm only concerned with the very top of this peak. So I'm scraping all this excess paint, and you'll see what I do in a minute. It's kind of a trick. Push it all back. Now, taking a brush here. It's a two inch brush. Look at the size of that thing. So this is something you can use to paint a house with. But because of this style, it's used a lot. So I'm just going to take this here, pull this and blend it down. Going with the shape of the mountain. Adding this in. Pulling off the excess paint. I want to go with the stroke of the mountain. Don't want to go against the grain. So this is instantly making these pushed back, making them softer, harder to perceive. Now sometimes you, know, you can't see it with the camera. I have a hair stuck on there from a, the brush. Just grab a palette knife and pull the hair off, get rid of it. Easy enough. Pulling this down. Now I'm just going to make these crisscross strokes and this kind of makes this mist. Isn't that cool? Really just brighten this up. So it's like these are the misty mountains. Maybe there's hobbits up there or trolls or Smaug's cave or something. You have to use your imagination with this stuff. As you can see this is not a happy painting so far. But that's alright. Your world you make whatever you want stormy day. I want a stormy painting. There, and you can see I'm going with the flow of the mountain. Now that easy you have just bang, you push mountain passes back. So you have this far mountain pass, closer one here. We could continue down. Um, I could put some snow in. For this one, I actually don't want to put any snow. I want to put 
I'm going to put just a touch of a highlight on here, but I'm not going to put a big dramatic snowbank. So for that, I'm going to use fan brush here. Just a little bit of white with a touch of the mountain. I'm going to dull this down to kind of a light gray. So it's not really snow, it could be. Just want to put the indication of very, very light highlights. Just a touch of detail because these are much closer. So by putting this in, you're adding a little bit of, just a little bit of detail in here. And these little lines, as you can see, will bring out the detail. Mm, let's have a little bit here. Might be hard for you to see in the camera. Now this is cool. I'm just going to take this stroke here and instantly push that peak back. So just by doing that touch right there, I instantly push it back. Look at that. Now the mountain's coming out. Let's put another one here. A little bit brighter color. This one's coming off. Maybe the sun's hitting, pushing this mountain back. So just that easy, I push the mountain back. A little bit of a stroke there. Isn't that cool? Just that easy. You can make mountains. Now a lot of this is going to be covered up, but I like that idea there. See, so I have a little bit of a highlight there, a little bit of a mountain pass. that you just push this back just that little stroke there pushes that back again I'm going to go over this very quickly just dull this up stroke the mountain up a little bit these lines help dull this out at the bottom again this is mist don't want a lot of detail and that quickly you have a mountain a little bit of a highlight so where do we go from here? Well, you want to layer the painting. So I'm layering it sky to mountain to foothills. We haven't gotten to the main section yet, but this is all in the background. A lot of this will be covered up by trees and things. So what I want to add next is some foothills. Now these should be, I'm going to start adding a little bit of green to it because you just can't have all gray. So we're going to add some dark green in with some black. So I'm going to get a clean brush. Mm. Use this brush which has some blue on it. I'm going to add some green. As you can see part of my palette here I have this sap green color. I want this very dark so I'm going to bring it down here. A little alizarin crimson. Lots of green. A little bit of brown, a little bit of black, a little bit of blue, just make a really dark color. And we'll go in and hit some, put in some foothills. Now there's ways you can do this with many brushes. I'm just using the two inch because I want to go fairly quickly. You can see how I pulled that together. It's kind of an edge. So now we'll go in here and decide where our foothills are going to be. Let's have a dramatic, dramatic come down here. So I'm going to bring a foothill in. Boom, bring this up here. Boom. Bring this down, big foothill here. And then I want to have a large hill, boom, going way up. This is where we start to get in some real mountain paths. And you just see, just using this method, looks like you're making thousands of trees all in the stroke of a brush. Just start to decide on the lay of the land. 
So just that fast, we put in another line and it pushes those mountains back. Now I may uh, see what you can do here is just pull this down slightly. And you can again, we're just dulling the bottom out and we instantly push these hills back into a mist. So this particular painting, I really want a lot of layers. But can you see that, how I just blended this a little bit? And what it does is it just pushes those back. Now, if I want to make it look like a lot of trees, I can take white and put it underneath. I don't want to quite do that yet. I want to get one more layer. One more, well, that's getting kind of close. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, I think I want to put a little bit of white detail in there. So I'm going to take a fan brush, just a little bit of liquid white. And you'll see how a thin paint sticks to a thicker paint. I'm just taking a little bit of this, just by pulling this up, and I'll dull this out. make it look like it's tons of like tree branches back here pretty dull there I don't want it can you hear the thunder it's thundering outside this is awesome I love this what a way to spend a rainy afternoon it's the weekend where I am I hope you're having a good weekend whatever you're doing hope life is treating you well Yeah, just by doing that, it creates a little illusion of millions of trees. You can also take your knife and just scrape in a couple of lines here. And again, that makes it look like, I don't know if the camera can pick this up. It makes it look like tons of white pines back there, or birch trees. Again, a lot of this is going to be covered up. It's all about illusion. It's fooling the eye. And you want to look at a painting from at least seven to nine feet away. You don't want to be up close. You want to be quite far away so that your brain can pick up the colors and the hues and fool you. Okay, let's put in a darker set. And I want this to be a bit more green. So I'm going to add just a touch of yellow to it, which is really going to lighten it up and bring up the green hues. So I'm adding yellow to this now which you'll see will make it more bright, more of a lighter green. Start to make kind of hills here. So this is going to be some grass. So we're going to lay in the lay of land. Again, I want this hill to come in here. So this is going to be grass coming down. This is much closer. And let's have this come down here. I want this to really resemble kind of a drop off. I'm going to have another hill down here. It's going to push it back. Let's go a little higher. Just by pressing, you can put all kinds of little grassy areas in there. But you can see how I'm pushing the land around with this color little bit at a time. Just laying down color here because I don't want to block it in yet. So you can see more grassy areas and we're going to add some pine trees. You know what I want to do I forgot to do is I want to lay some water in. Let me show you how to do that. I don't know if the camera's picking up the bottom of the painting, but there's a really, really easy way to add water, and here's how we do it. 
I'm going to take a dry brush here. I'm just going to put some dark blue on here, a little bit of Prussian blue, a little bit of that gray, more blue. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. This is dark. Now you just drag this here, and I'll show you how this works in a minute. Pull this down. See, I'm pulling this from the sides in. And what this will do is lay in some color. Remember with art, you're not going to get brightness without dark. You're not going to have dark without light, and that's a good analogy for life. Life isn't always going to be sunny days. You're going to have some real stormy days in there. Otherwise, you don't know if it's good or bad or positive or negative. You're not going to know happiness without bouts of sadness, anger, and depression. So we're going to add this in. Just by doing this, and these light strokes, I'm going to add in water. I'm going to darken the outside a little bit because the, the edges you want darker than the center. You can see how I left the center open. There's a little bit of a white stripe there. You want that. That's pulling the eye to the center of the picture. So by me adding a little bit of darkness in here, it's going to pull your eye to the center. I'm trying to get a little bit quicker here. Pulling this in. Yeah, you can see a deep lake here maybe. And then I go across to erase the brush strokes in the canvas. So you can see illusion of water. And what we'll do is we'll start to pull these in. Now the next step is I'm going to start to build some of the foreground. So I'm going to, before I do that, yeah, let's put one more layer and then I'm going to add some yellow in. I'm going to bring these mountains down, I mean these foothills down a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to that other brush I have with the green. I'm going to add some darkness to this so that I can make sure I go over it with the light. So I'm taking some green. really want a dark color. This here, I'm going to put some really dark foothills in and let's add a little bit of more detail. So I'm turning the brush up here which gives it more detail of trees. You can see as we get closer we get a little bit more detail of these trees. I'm going to block this in that pushes the, those holes and those hills back. Bringing this down. So now we're starting to build a forest. How cool is that with this brush so quick? adding all that forest in. It's all illusion. See how I'm adding the forest? So easy. Now watch how easy this is. Let's add a little bit more color here. Watch. I'm just going to pull down here. Add a little bit of this. I'm going to take a clean brush and just start to pull this down. By pulling this down, you create an illusion of a water line. So remember we added our water in. By pulling that down, makes the illusion of a reflection. The more you go over it, the more it dulls. So that quickly you have this forest reflected in the water. And then in a minute we'll put in a bit of a water line. Actually, I'll do that now. Because I don't want to go back later on and have to do that. So maybe we're going to put a little land in. I'm just going to take my palette knife. Find some dark brown, little sienna, Van Dyke brown putting some paint on this knife. I'm just going to add some darkness here. This could be uh, some land. Because the trees wouldn't go right to the water without some land in here. I'm 
this is okay. I'll show you what we're going to do here. We're going to move this. I don't know if you can hear that thunder. That's really cool. Again, I'm only concerned with the outside line. The rest of this is going to be covered. Just concerned about the center more than anything. I'm just adding a little bit of this land in here. It's all about layers. So just using the, the watch how I can take this knife and just see I'm just pulling that out a little bit using perspective. By doing that it pushes the rest back. Isn't that cool? Pulling this out, making a little perspective. So you can start to see a little bit of a land mass here. And then again, I can just take a... Well, let me show you another method. I'll show you a different way of doing tree, tree stumps here. Let's do... Let's use a little liner brush. Use a little bit of paint thinner. A thin paint th sticks to a thicker paint. So I'm using a little paint thinner and what that's going to do is make the paint like ink and then I'm just going to come in here I'll just show you a couple just by pulling up it looks looks like I'm making tons of perhaps details of trees and I'm going to go over this again but just pulling in some illusion of trees here because it's light it will stick against the dark and I'll show you how I'm going to cover these I'm going to highlight it in a minute just pulling these up as if there's some trees in the back not really concerned about detail yet just pulling a few a few of these highlights One there sticking out. And then I'll go back over it with this. I think that's the right brush. There's so many brushes going. And that green and yellow. Just touching down a little bit. So I want to cover a lot of that up. I don't want that to be too detailed. Just a hint. You're not going to see much of those trunks. Now let's create a bit of a water line here. Uh, here's the knife. Again you want to use paper towel to wipe off your palette knife. Don't use paper towel to wipe the brushes off. You need paint there for that. And I'm just going to go in and grab a little bit of liquid white here. Just start to put a little hint of a water line. That bright against the dark will really push things back. The more you hit it, the duller it'll get. So be careful. Just a little hint of some landmass water hitting the water line. I don't want that too bright. Maybe that's where you go fishing. Knife is pretty cool. You can do a lot with the knife scraping into the canvas here. So as you can see, Push that back a bit more. It's all about perspective. There. So we have a little bit of a water line. This is all going to get covered up. And maybe we can just take a little bit of, let's just do straight up burnt sienna. 
and a little bit of the white and I want a marbled effect that's nice there I want this to look to look a little bit like a little bit of a highlight here on the dirt it just pushes that back gives it another hue to look at bring this in adds a little illusion of maybe dirt coming down to coming down to the lake don't kill all the dark leave some of it in there but you can see just that little bit of brown brings it out isn't that cool bring this down here so as we get closer there's a bit more detail as you can see now I'm going to make some large trees. You ready to get brave? Here we go. This is your test. Uh, I'm going to start with some, maybe some large pine trees, maybe here coming down. So you'll see as we layer this, a lot of this gets covered and that's intentional. Let's use a fan brush going into my dark color, the black, the brown, the green, lots of green. I want this to be almost pure black. Evergreens are really dark. Not a lot of highlight. So I'm just making a rounded edge here. Let's decide we're going to build a tree. Let's put it uh, mm, I like that up there. I'm going to start it maybe here and bring it down. So here's the bravery test. Let's put boom. That's the tip of the tree. Now watch what I do here. The camera might not be able to pick it up. I just start to zigzag my way down and we're building a nice pine tree here. Bring this down. Of course as the tree gets lower it's darker and fatter you want that bring this down here let's put another one it looks kind of odd by itself mm, boom right here there's one that's gonna pop through I don't know if the camera can pick up on this, but you can see the darkness against the light, how that creates the illusion of huge pine trees. So this is where the painting gets interesting, where you really can start to fill in. Let's put one here. It's raining outside, as I mentioned. Really a nice background, better than any music. Nature's music. Now I'll show you how I'll push this all back in a moment. Let's put some pine trees on this side. Again, all this is doing is pulling pulling the eye. Let's make a tall one. Let's make one here. Real tall pine. I want to leave branches here. There. See how that sticks right out? Let's bring this down. Just zigzagging in. Branches are going down toward the ground. Just looking for darkness right now. But don't have everything on the same elevation. So I'm moving this around so it's not all. Let's put a tall one. I want, you know, I want to break up the monotony of this. Don't want them all the same height. And 
and let the color pop through. I want the light in the back to come through. Don't kill every color. This is all dark, 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 dark. This takes over here. Picks up on that brown. So just by putting that tall peak, it makes these smaller. And if you don't like something, you can go back and fix it, see? So I just go in and just by pushing, I change the layout of the tree. See, I like that top better. Now I want to push this back, so I'm going to bring these trees down. So I need a lot of color on this, a lot of sap green here. Watch how I just push this back now. Uh, I'm going to bring this down. Need darkness here. Now check this out. I'm going to reverse these. So I'm going to reverse this in the water. Just a hint. You're not going to see the whole tree because it's pushed back. But you'll see parts of these. So just by doing this, just a hint. It's fooling the eye. It's as if the tips of the trees can be seen in the water. And then we take that clean brush. I'm going to clean a brush off, so put it in some paint thinner I have here on the floor. Clean the excess off. Bang it in the bucket. Clean it off. Now just by pulling this down, choom, you'll watch these reflections, really cool, I love this. That pulls the trees into the water. Isn't that cool? Just by doing that, you have instant, instant water. Isn't that neat? So you can see how it pulls these trees down. Then I can go in and add, because it's dark, I want to start to make some lighter things. So we'll take some of that brown that I had for the center here. We'll start to pull in some land. Mm, let's take a palette knife. Let's try a small one. Put in just a little bit of a hint of land here. Just a little bit. Pull this out. As the as the uh, the line comes towards you, you want it to be more wide. Again, perspective is pulling it in. So just by pulling this out, make more here. Just that easy, you have a little bit of a water line here. Now I want to put a few indications of a little bit of a trunk here. I'm going to highlight these a little bit, but I'm just putting a little indication of you know, a base of the pine tree to something to hold on to. Again, 90% of this is going to be covered up. Whoops, I'm going to knock the canvas over. And use the knife in here to create a couple of Trees, isn't that cool? And now we'll go over this with a slight highlight. I don't want this too bright. Oh, let's see. Fan brush. Choose some yellow and green. I want a mm, little bit lighter green here. This will slight highlight just a little a little 
little bit of color. And see by adding that highlight it pushes the rest back, covers up some of the trunks, starts to give a little bit of flavor to the painting. And as you get darker, you want less and less highlights because it's getting farther toward the ground. So I don't want too much highlight here. Just a little bit breaks up the tree. And then we're going to take the same color and going to add a little bit more yellow, yellow little yellow ochre to make it a bit more of a gold. You'll see what I'm doing here in a minute as far as color here. I'm adding a little bit more of the yellow ochre. Let's just put in a little indication of some highlights here. Maybe some grassy areas coming down. a little bit just a touch more color I like that color that gold and see so you change the hue here and it pops a little bit more gives the indication of some flowers or some little bit of color. Now again that's all going to get pushed back. Let's make a little bit of a water line here. Mm. A lot of brushes going on. This is why if you start this hobby you can always ask for brushes for Christmas for your birthday because you need a lot of brushes. back here watch this that cool just with that little line it really shoves it I'm gonna make that come out a little bit there that's good now foreground which is probably the hardest part now you could leave it like that but it's kind of I, I like this part. I like the lightness, but I want to add another layer. I'm going to leave that there, but I'm going to add I'm going to add a layer here, which really brings it out. Now we have to decide: do we want some big trees? Do we want to keep it more soft? Do we want to keep it more uh, more sky water? It really is up to you. I don't suggest leaving it like this. It's a touch boring at the bottom, so I'm going to bring at least. Maybe I'll leave this and just bring a layer down here to, to push it all back. Mm. We should be brave. We should put a huge tree which will really shove the whole thing back. What I might do is I like this section. I might bring a tree up here, cover it with leaves to push the mountains back. So it's not so wide open but I'm not sure remember I said I'm an amateur and I'm not I don't have anything in particular in mind I do like the depth of it so far but let's add should we add a big tree it's what cracks me up if you watch um, when I watch Bob Ross painting on YouTube you always see people type in ruined in capital letters ruined because <laughs> every time he adds a new layer someone out there despises it and they write ruined he ruined it and then at the end they're like oh that looks so much better it's it's so subjective I kind of like the openness of this let's add a layer here I really want to push that back more so 
Let's add some darkness down here. Let's get a brush. Just going to literally add dark. Black, brown, a little lizard and crimson to warm it up. I just want darkness. So here we go. Here we go. And let's push some things here. Here, I like that side. I'm going to push them here. So I'm going to add this these bushes in. And I'll show you what I do here. Add this in. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick up this side. I'm just adding color. Push that all back. Isn't that cool with this brush? Now look how quick that is. That took me literally 30 seconds and I added an entire bottom over here. Uh, that will give us a base if we want to put a tree. I like this area. I'm going to leave that open. A little bit more darkness here. Yeah, I like that. Look at that. Thousands of leaves. It would take you 10 weeks to write what do with a script brush. See how that dark into the light? That's really cool. Let's have that go down to nothing there. Maybe that's where your boat goes sailing or you go fish fishing with your grandpa. There, I like that. I like the idea of this pulling the eye in. Now, um, should we put a tree? What do you guys think? I can leave it spacious and open like that or I can add some, uh, some depth to it. We could stop right here and just call it a day. Um, could build a cabin could put birds in. This is your world. You don't want to overdo something, as with everything in life. As soon as you think it's finished, leave it alone. But I like the idea of putting a big tree. Mm. Let's at least put some highlight down here. Because it's the foreground, you want much more color in it. The closer it gets to you, the more depth it should have. Let's put, uh, let's get a different brush. This is a good one. I'm gonna put some yellow ochre again. I like that gold color. A little bit of a white in with it because a thin paint sticks to a thicker paint. Check this out. I'm gonna use this color as gold. Now this should highlight nicely. Watch this. I don't know if the camera can see down here. Just by touching. Adds light. You see the light? How it's like the, the sun is picking up a little bit. Just a little bit coming in here. that highlight Ooh, look at that chewing pops out maybe there's a little bit of sunlight hitting the ground there adds a little bit of color to it let's make a path I want someone to be able to walk here I don't like to put humans in the painting much but sometimes I put a fence or the um, illusion of the path as if people have walked here before or maybe a deer bear or something has made a path so I'm gonna use this burnt umber make a brown here just use a base color I'm gonna scrape in a little path and then of course it gets wider as it comes through I'm gonna have to hold the uh, easel for this or it'll fall so this here, I'm just scraping in the indication of a path. Gets wider as it comes toward us, thinner as it goes far away. It goes down here somewhere, we don't know where it goes.
and then we go in and highlight it. How are we doing on time? You guys in a rush? I'm not, so let's spend a few more minutes. Using the brown and the white, I'm just going to quickly touch and highlight a little bit. Let's use this side. Just an illusion of a few stones. Just that easy we have. A couple of highlights on the path. What's cool is when this dries, it makes a beautiful texture so you can touch it. If you like a tactile sense, this painting has a texture to it. Really nice. There. Now let's put that path and dig it in with some flowers. I want to put a little bit more red in this section. It's like a brownish yellow. Touch of white there, lighten it up. I have a mix of colors going on. Ooh, that's nice. A couple of red flowers coming in here, pushing that back. Ooh, I like that. Let's go right across here. Yeah, that pushes that path into the painting more. Now I'm going to take a highlighter here, a little liner script brush. I think I have a better one here. Wash this off. I'm going to put the indication of a couple of little dark trees. Again, I'm putting paint thinner in with the brown. Making it really dark. I want this like an ink. Yeah, just a touch, maybe a couple of dead trees in here. Give it a little character. Let's put a tree here, perhaps. He's just little branches sticking out there. This is where you can put a lot of detail in if you really feel like it. And a couple of highlights there. There's one here, just to, uh, I don't know. I love the thunder in the background, I wish you could hear it. I'm just putting a couple of hints of a couple trees. And check this out, you just use this little brush here and you can pull up and you can make all kinds of uh, details, almost like grass, isn't that cool? Pulling up little grasses here. See? Makes it look like there's tons of grass sticking out. And light against the dark. Maybe some cat o' nine tails, little rabbits living in there. And that, do whatever you want here. I don't know, I wanted to be pine trees, put put some sort of oak. You get struck by lightning, it's dead. Let your imagination go, you can see just by putting these little shapes. It's all about shapes and color. Just putting a little branch there, look at that one. That guy comes up, pushes those mountains back. You don't want to use the same type of tree. Sometimes you want to put a deeper tree here. That one comes up there. We don't know. So just by putting a little shape in it helps. Now again, we can stop here. I like it. Um, it's not great, but for an hour. You could put so much in. That's what I love about this. Now, I can come back three days from now and this won't be dry. It'll still be just almost as liquidy as it was. 
as it was. Um, so I could come in and put a big tree if I want. I can come in and add a cabin here. I can put a fence. I can make a boat with a guy or a woman fishing out there. It doesn't matter. I'm going to leave it for now because I think this is a just to give you an idea of the way that you can take paint and sketch out an idea. And again, I had no idea what I was going to do when I started. Uh, I just let the painting kind of dictate to me what it wants to do. And it doesn't take too, too much practice to be able to do something like this. The beauty of creation, taking just a blank canvas. This is like our life, you know, it's an analogy and I can go in and, and create the world that I want. So if I'm having a bad life or I'm having a bad point in my life, I can start fresh. I can let that dry and go on to a new fresh canvas. So today we started with an 18 by 24 white blank canvas and we created a scene that might outlive me if someone doesn't throw it away. Uh, it's really cool to just be able to sit and create something just to have fun and relax and let your blood pressure down, let your issues go away, not think about the past or the future and just enjoy nature. And nature is so connected to the human species. It's really important just to sit and create. And maybe you like to write, maybe you like to draw like I do occasionally, you like to create music like I do, or you like to sit and paint whatever medium you like to use to express yourself. I use martial arts to express myself physically too. All of these things keep me calm, cool, and collected and, and, and they really make me appreciate life and all of its beauty. So we have kind of a stormy, mountainous wilderness, perhaps Colorado or um, I don't know, somewhere out west. I like it. It's, it's fair. Uh, it's a quick little sketch in my mind so we'll call that done for now I don't want to overdo it and hopefully uh, this might inspire one or two of you to go out and paint or to draw or to pick up your guitar or whatever it might be just to go out into your backyard and enjoy nature and watch the birds or if you're in the city maybe just take a walk down the street look at the pigeons I don't know wherever you are in your section of the world. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this little painting and um, Bob Ross who I have sitting over there continues to inspire me long after his death and it's all practice. It's all about having fun. So maybe we'll do one of these again. Leave a comment and if you want to see more we'll do a couple more. Maybe a seascape next time or uh, maybe something bright like that with the sunset. Something a little bit more cheerful. I really want to thank you for watching and until next time, have a great day and happy painting to you.